Yes, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first pre-game show of the new season. Obviously, the 24-25 EFL season is about to get underway. Burnley's first game is a difficult one. It's away at Kenilworth Ward against a team that we expect to be up there with us for the majority of the season. Some people predicting that they'll win the league as well. So it's, it's going to be a, a, a tough game down at Luton. But as I'm sure we'll get into it in a little bit, we will be talking about their injuries and stuff. And they do have quite a lot. But as you can see, I'm joined by Phil. And he's from We Are Luton Town. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, good to be here, mate. Um, looking forward to the game on Monday uh, with a bit of trepidation, as you said in your intro. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we're a, li we're a little bit light at the back, but we'll get into that later on. But other than that, I'm, I'm doing well, mate. Doing well. Happy days, happy days. How's the summer been? You've been missing the old footy? Well, there's been a lot of footy on, but you've been missing club football. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, I'm I'm very much in the camp of I put club over country. I know that that'll rile a few people, but for me, I, Luton is number one, and uh, I'm desperate for it to be back. And like, even having to wait the extra few days. I mean, it starts on Friday the league, didn't it? But uh, we've yeah. we've got to wait until Monday night. So even that's a bit of a stretch. But uh, yeah, like yeah. I said, I can't wait for it to get going. I don't mind it, you know, having to wait a couple more nights because I can sit down and I'm not sure if I'm working or not. I don't think I am. Um, but I can sit down and watch pretty much all the games on Friday night. Hopefully we see a couple of Lancashire defeats on Friday night. And then there's obviously all the games on Saturday as well. So I can sit there, I can watch them. And obviously you don't get to do that if you, if, if your team's playing because you'll watch your team and or, or you'll be on the game. So I don't necessarily mind that. Um, but obviously speaking of the summer, it's been a quiet one for Luton Town, hasn't it? To be fair, it's been a quiet one for a lot of teams. But I'm, I'm, have you brought any players in? I think it's just a couple of young players you've brought in, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a couple of players. So um, the the young one uh, is Raul Walters, and uh, he pl he one, plays yeah. as a sort of a right wing back or a, um, a right sided centre back. Is how we've seen him play in the friendlies so far. I think that's probably more through necessity uh, rather than it being his preferred position. But uh, he played played at the weekend in our last friendly against Celta Vigo. Um, he, we bought him from Arsenal, or we got him on a, on a free free transfer, I believe, um, from Arsenal. Um, and he got a couple of... Um, he was named on the bench a few times for the first team last year and he's been doing well in their under-23s and he's he's a, he's a solid-looking defender. Um, he's Physique-wise, he looks strong, uh, looks quite pacey. Um, so, But he's... I think the reality of it is with him is that he'll sort of grow into the team. Um, I think if everyone was fit, he'd be he'd be looking to gain a place in the team rather than being thrust in, which I think is the situation we might find ourselves in. Um, and the other signing that we've made is Shandon Baptiste. So we again, we got him on a free from Brentford. Um, so from speaking to people at Brentford, they, they, they're impressed with him. He's just very injury prone. Um, so I think that yeah. Luton have taken a bit of a punt on him. He's He's got a dodgy um, shoulder. Apparently he dislocates his shoulder quite a lot and he, he misses a lot of game time. Um, I think he's been brought in as a sort of replacement for Laconga um, rather than as a replacement for Barkley. Um, but other than that... It, it's very dry um, in terms of in terms of uh, incomings. There's not been many outgoings either. To be fair, we lost Ross Barkley, who was massive. Lukonga yeah. was returned on loan, um, but other than that, it's it's a bit quiet to be honest with you, which which is worrying a lot of us when when you consider our injury situation. Yeah, I mean, you said there there's not that many outgoings, but Barkley was. You, I know you said Barkley was massive, but I do want to yeah. particularly talk about that because. When I watched you last season, obviously with you being down there with us, I did watch you when I could. He was integral to the way you played. I mean, obviously, I know you did very well in the championship the year before, obviously getting promotion, then brought him in. But last year, he was he was the heartbeat, I felt, of Luton. Is he going to be a massive miss or do you think you can adapt to life without him very quickly? Because like you said, it was only here for the year and you, had, you, you, you played well without him the year before. So do you think you can get back into that very quickly, into the groove without him or, or is he going to be a big miss? He's, I, to me, he's going to be a huge miss um, because in my life as a as a Luton fan, he's the best I've ever seen. Some of the older generation will see that, say, that people, the likes of Ricky Hill um, were, were a better player, but I've never seen a better player at Kenilworth Road put on a Luton shirt. And I think the worry that I have in regards to how you've mentioned about how we play, last year it felt like he was not only the metronome but he was the driving force between anything really creative if there yeah. was anything creative going forward he was either the one that was initially spreading it out wide or he was driving the ball himself um so i do worry about us having that lack of athleticism and that lack of drive through the middle um 
you mentioned about before that we've 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 been good before him. That, that's very true, but we played a very different way. Um, when Rob Edwards came in and replaced Nathan Jones, he was very careful not to change things too quick. But how the season started last year, after that first eight, nine, ten games, he knew that he had to change something, did so, and has changed our sort of ethos of how we play football. So I'm a little bit worried about the fact that we don't have a Barkley that's able to do that at the moment. Um, so I, I'll, I'll admit there's a there's an element of trepidation. There's a within the Luton fan base we've we've sort of pinned our hopes to a couple of our our older players um, like the Jordan Clarks, um, who's a neat and tidy footballer. Don't get me wrong, um, but Barkley's was different level. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of trepidation about how we're going to fill that gap. Yeah, you mentioned the Conga as well, obviously similar sort of position. Are you going to be light in central midfield, do you think, on uh, Friday? Not Sorry, not Friday night, Monday night? So I think, if I'm being honest, I think it will be Baptiste will, will, will slip in there straight away. Um, I think that he probably will be alongside Jordan Clark. So we've got um, legs. We've got a little bit of Premier League experience as well now with with Baptiste coming in. It's not yeah. like we've lost a huge amount of experience in that in that respect. Um, but it's it's not Lacunga and Barkley, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, so like I say, it's it, it's a it's a difficult one for me to tie down exactly how we're how we're going to do it. But that's those those are the two that I expect to be in there. Jordan Clark nipping around, sort of doing the doing the donkey work sort of thing, trying to get a toe in and, and Baptiste probably spreading the play a little bit more. Um I think we'll we'll do what we typically did last year. We'll utilise our wingers a lot. I think that that's where the battle will probably be on Monday. Um yeah. I think it'll be the the wing backs of Ogbene and Doughty up against your wingers as well. So that, that's where I think the action points are going to be. Yeah, I agree with that one. Uh, we mentioned at the top of the show um, that you do have a lot of issues at centre-back at the minute or defensive issues. You've got quite a few injuries. Um, I do follow quite a lot of Luton accounts, obviously the We Are Luton Town account, or other podcasts, which I obviously won't mention. Um, but there's sort of like other other Luton fans as well that are in there. And and a lot, a lot of talk has been about this issue at centre-back. I even saw one guy create like a starting eleven. And I think he had like your mascot. Is it Harry yeah. Hatter, Happy Hatter, or something at, at the back? The, how how bad is it for you at, at, at centre back? Are you incredibly light at the minute with a lot of injuries? Yeah, we really are. Um, and and the thing is, it's got to the point where we were using wing backs as the sort of inside centre backs, and and even they've got injured. Um, I mean, the first yeah. preseason game we had, Hashioka, who we bought in January, he's done a hamstring. You've got Amari Bell, who missed the last few months of last season. He's still out. Apparently, he's closest. Yeah. Um, but in regards to Monday, it's, he's not going to be there. Uh, Reese Burke is arguably um, our best, our best out and out centre back. Um, he's out, and he's a, he's a, he's another couple of weeks further behind alongside Mads Anderson who we've also bought as a centre-back and we barely saw him last year. I think he played sort of a handful of games um, and he's been injured pretty much since. It just seems whenever he gets close, he has a setback and he's gone. And then in a friendly at the weekend that against the Celta Vigo game, um, Ted and Mengi, who I, I said about Burke being potentially our best centre-back, I think Mengi, we bought him last year with a view to sort of introducing him into the squad and he was just a revelation. He was absolutely superb and he was the one that maintained his fitness the best out of all of our centre-backs throughout the course of the season. And even he's tweaked his knee at the weekend. So we're looking at um, Joe Johnson, who is, he plays at um, sort of, England under 21s level, um, but he'll be sort of the left side of the centre centre halves. Then we've yeah. got Tom Holmes, who we bought from Reading in back in January. Um, but whether he's going to be able to step up to, I mean, he's played in the championship before. Don't get me wrong, but whether or not he's going to be able to step up and be that that sort of leader at the back because uh, he's the only natural centre back that we've got. Um, and then at, at right centre back, that's where I think that uh, we'll be utilising Raw Walters that I said about earlier on as as the newest signing. Yeah. And then beyond that, we're, we're struggling. Um, so if anyone picks up an injury during the game or in the next few weeks, we're we're really we're really in, in, in a lot of trouble, actually, from the very get-go. So it is it is a real concern for us. 
yeah, it does sound like you're pretty thin there at the minute. How are you expecting Burnley to get at you then? Like, what would be the best way for, for us to get at you? Because we're not like a big bruising sort of side. Like like you said earlier, we probably will get the ball out, out wide and, and have the wingers run at you. Maybe have Lyle dropping deep, something like that. Again, it's interesting. I'm not 100% certain about on how Burnley are going to set up because obviously we've got the new manager in Scott Parker. So what, what would be the best way for Burnley, do you think, to, to be able to, to get at the holes in your defence at the minute? I think... If- Especially taking into account how it looked at the weekend, I think getting in behind those wing backs because as much as they're an attacking threat, um, the yeah. Doughty and Ogbené are naturally driven to go forward. You know, so I think that when when the, those back three are exposed on the break and you've got the pace that you've got on on the wing to be able to cut inside, to be able to sort of play little balls in in through behind, uh, that's where I'm going to be worried. Is when you're attacking as perhaps on the break. Um, like I say, we're 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 much more of a possession based team than we were two seasons ago um yeah. but equally so are burnley so it'll be interesting to see how the, how the game pans out um but yeah i think if i'm being honest though, with you those sorts of through balls that are sort of turning our inside defenders out if that makes any sense um to, yeah. to put some balls in that's where we're going to find it a little bit difficult because like i said we're we're putting round pegs in square holes to be honest with you there's a couple in there that Truth be told, would prefer to be the wing back. Um, Johnson um, and and Walters in particular, that they're going to want to be naturally further out wide. So the fact that the the ball's going to be to to the side of them rather than uh, rather than in front of them, I think, could be a problem. Interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how we set up against you. Obviously, like I said, new manager. How are you expecting you to set up against us? Like you said there, you feel like you're more of a possession-based team than you were a couple of years ago, but may not necessarily have the tools to do that anymore with Barkley and Lukonga both leaving. Are you expecting to try and have the majority of the ball and and try and take the game to Burnley, or are you thinking that you may be a little bit more cautious because of the injuries you've got? I think... I think that Rob Edwards wants to play a certain way um, and, I, and I, I can't see him changing too much away from that. The only thing I would say is that he will know, just like um, we've discussed before, um, Joe, that we don't want to lose the first game, especially at home under the lights um, yeah. after a disappointing season last year. We, we're two teams that are going to aspire to be in the top top sort of six this year um, and see what we can do to 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 get back into the Premier League. So we we will attack. Sometimes it's our Achilles heel um, is the fact that we attack to the to the point of our own detriment. But the reality of it is when you consider how light we are at the back, I think that, that it could be a case of attack is the best form of defence because we are, I, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm quite happy with moving forwards. I think that when you take those back three and the goalkeeper out, you've then got the likes of Doughty who gets loads of assists. Yeah. You've got Ogbunny who's very, very quick. Um, we mentioned earlier on about Baptiste and Clark will probably be the ones that are sort of sitting in the middle and, and making things tick. But they then give the ball to the likes of Chong as well, who's who's creative. The, we've then got the likes of Morris that can stitch play together and all looking for that target man of Adebayo up front. So I'm not saying that we're going to lump the ball forward. I think that we will use the wings as best as we possibly can. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, I genuinely think it's going to be a case of trying to out-attack you, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I do feel like it's going to be something similar. I feel like not again, like I said, I've, I'm not entirely sure on how we're gonna how we're gonna play or how we're gonna set up because I've not seen us play under Parker apart from uh, a friendly at the weekend. It's just a one friendly that we've been able to watch here at Burnley Street at the weekend. Obviously, the draw with Cadiz first off give the ball away quite a bit, but looked like we did want to keep the ball rather than lump it. Second half a lot better and obviously got the equaliser with a great goal from Lyle Foster. Um, I do want to move into sort of like how you feel the manager is at the minute, obviously promoted and came in from Watford, apologies for swearing, Um, but then obviously ended up winning the fans around very quickly with obviously getting promotion and doing very well. Last year, it's interesting because there was a lot of debate last year about Burnley fans, whether company was good enough, some people were company out, some people company in. In the end, company himself was company out. Um, he decided to obviously <laughs> go on to, to to bigger and better things. I'm still bewildered at how he got that, but that's a different debate. What's the thinking at the minute behind Rob Edwards? I'm sure you are all 100% behind him and I'd expect nothing less. But what is is there any pressure on him to deliver this season and and things like that? If you finish eighth, for example, could be could there be some pressure on him, or do you think you're a little bit more reserved than that as a fan base? 
I think in in many ways, Rob Rob was um, last last year. He was he was a revelation for us, not only in terms of the fact that he changed the way that we've been that we've been playing to give us a chance. I think if we continued the yeah. way that we started, we would have been we would have been doomed a lot quicker than we were. Um, I think that he's very well loved because of the way that he conducts himself as well. I think that we had a few instances last year. I didn't even mention earlier on in, in our defence the, the, the Tom Lockyer situation, and but I yeah, felt like course, the way yeah. that Rob um, dealt with that was was immaculate. I, I think that he he really held himself in high esteem and take take the tactical side, take the management side out of things. I think that he shone a light on how much of a good person he is, which will put him naturally in the shop window. So when we tied him down in the summer and we got him to sign a contract extension, I was over the moon. I thought, yep, great, we'll, we'll bounce straight back. Um, what's been disappointing and what's been probably a frustration, I'm not saying that it's the, it's the board's fault or anything like that, it's just the fact that we managed to get him over the line and you would expect us to then back him. You know, and get and give yeah. him the tools to be able to to go full pelt at another push for promotion, and that hasn't quite materialised yet. So we're obviously we we three and a bit weeks or so away from the from the transfer window shutting, but the season starts in five days. You know, so um, I feel like he'll be slightly disappointed about the fact that he hasn't been backed. But I, in his interviews, he's always been very clear that the that the lads are working behind the scenes. They're trying to get things done. Um, but I think a common conception amongst the Luton fans is in the past, we've been very prudent and very clever with some of our recruitment. Now, that's going to be really hard when teams that you're trying to buy from, especially domestically, they know you've been in the Premier League. They're not daft. They're, yeah. They they want pay in now. You know, that like we can't expect the same deals as we've as we've had in the past where we've got a, a miraculous deal over the line for a, a top player that's been plying their trade in, in the Championship or League One. And expect to turn them into a into a jewel overnight that people want paying, and uh, there's a little bit of that frustration as the days tick by where nothing's happened, where we're thinking, "Hang on a minute, like back back Edwards, give him the tools," you know. So, um, it, move uh, uh, as a general thing, though. Rob Edwards is is very well loved. I've I've got every faith that he will do what he needs to do to 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 make us competitive this year and i think as much as it seems bleak right now with those injuries that i mentioned they will come back and, and when they do come back we'll we'll i'll be speaking to you hopefully by the time that we play the reverse fixture in a very very different mood i just feel like at the moment it's it's been a bit of a quiet summer when you consider what we've lost your barclays your lacongas and yeah. and feeling like rob hasn't been given the tools to 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 go about trying to give us an immediate return yeah, fair enough. Understandable. Um, I do want to obviously go into predictions, not for the game. Obviously, we'll get into them in in a second. I know you said obviously I did a show for you guys over on your channel. By the time this comes out, that will be available. So feel free to head over to the We Are Looting Town YouTube channel and you'll be able to watch it there. I've seen the thumbnail. Ollie sent me the thumbnail last night. I looked very miserable. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I, I wasn't miserable in the interview, at least I don't think I was. Um, but I remember in that show, you were saying that you have already done your sort of like predictions for the league and stuff like that. Where do you think Luton will be? Not necessarily where do you think they'll finish, but what sort of season do you think Luton will have? Obviously, a lot of people predicting Luton to be up at the top. I would be one of them. Not winners, personally, but yeah. I've seen a lot of people predict Luton to be the champions. What are your thoughts on on the upcoming season? How do you think Luton can do? I think um, it, it depends on how we can... Um how we can get over these difficulties that we're going to start off with. Um, I think if we can get into sort of September, October and get these senior players back, then we'll be in good stead. Cause like I said, I've got no problems with us going forward. Um, that's, yeah. that's not, that really isn't my, um, my concern. And we had a great goal scoring record last year in the premier league. So um, knowing that Morris is going to be back and applying his trade in the championship, um, he'll frighten most, most offenses. Cause he's, you just can't get the gut, the, off the ball so um i'm i'm quite happy with how we're going to be moving forward as a as a whole season if we're in the playoff mix i'll be happy uh, and that might seem like i'm really downplaying it considering there there have been people that have predicted us to win the league but um as you said we spoke yesterday um on my show and uh i i have you and leeds tipped to be automatic um and i think that from an outsider's perspective um Scott Parker as a as a championship manager that's that's got promotions before is a very very astute 
bit of business by Burnley. So I expect to see uh, yourselves and Leeds up there with the likes of Luton, um, the likes of, I think, Coventry are a dark horse this year. Yeah. I think that they're a fantastic side. Um, and there'll be a couple of others that, like, you, you, as much as I dislike saying it, there'll be a couple of others like Sheffield United, Norwiches that will be around uh, about it. So, yeah, the playoffs is what I think would be an acceptable season for us, um, given the circumstances. Yeah, interestingly, I had you down as players <coughs> as well. Uh, I have a particular particular area, um, uh, sorry, number, um, but I, I do think playoffs for Luton. Just because of the the, the loss of Barclay, I, I, I see a lot of people predicting Luton to win the league, and I think they're just basing that on, well, they've just been relegated and they were the best of the relegated teams last year, so they're probably going to win it. I just feel that without Barclay and the Conga, it's going to take a while to adjust, and then you'll be playing catch-up, in my opinion. Um, you mentioned there Scott Parker. Interesting. I do just want to pull you on that one because you said it's an astute appointment. Obviously, a couple of promotions already. I have seen other self-proclaimed, admittedly, uh, EFL experts say that Burnley will finish, one said eighth, one said seventh, and both of them outside the playoffs because of Scott Parker. They were saying that Scott Parker is, is not a good manager. He's not done very well before. I mean, he's, like you said, he's, he's already got two promotions out of this league. I'll be honest, at the time I was underwhelmed by Parker, but I've come round to it. I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I feel like he's got two promotions on his CV. And one of these uh, EFL experts was saying that Leeds will win it because they've got a good manager in Daniel Fark. But at the same time, Daniel Fark has two promotions out of this league. Scott Parker has two promotions out of this league. Daniel Fark have failed to get that Leeds team promoted last season. But yet, nobody seems to be ridiculing him for that. And if it was Parker, for example, I feel like they would do. Um, so just, yeah, I just wanted to go into more depth on why you think Scott Parker's an astute uh, appointment, considering Burnley fans themselves were under underwhelmed, admittedly, myself included, and some other sort of like predictions of sort of like ridiculed Burnley for appointing Scott Parker and said that's the reason why they won't finish in the top six. Uh, yeah, see, that that to me is nonsensical. Uh, the, the people that have been saying that you're going to finish that low down. Um, I, I just... When I when I saw that you made that appointment, obviously you you were, you company did wonders for you, especially at this level. I mean, the, your championship season when he had his first season was unbelievable. I mean, you you were pretty yeah. much untouchable, um, and uh, he, he's obviously gone and got himself a job at Bayern Munich. And I think, without trying to sound like I'm being disrespectful to Burnley, I think that that's off the back of the reputation of the first season in management and yeah, well, yeah. the fact that he was Man City captain and he's one of the the, the uh, He's 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 one of Pep Guardiola's, you know. He, he's he's got the Pep Guardiola thing um, under his belt. He he's plays a certain way, and Bayern Munich think I'll have a bit of that because he'll be the sort of second coming. Um, but the reality of it is, when I saw that Scott Parker was 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 appointed, I mean, what when you're looking at coming back into the Premier League, what what more can you ask for than a guy that's not just taking it? You mentioned Daniel Farker earlier on. He's only taken Norwich up. And he had his time to build that squad and he did it with his own players on two occasions. No no problem with that. But Scott Parker's done it with two different teams as well. Like He knows how to turn a squad around and get them to play the way that he has. I mean, when when he did it with Fulham, um, that they they were very, very comfortable, I think, going up that season. And and it was the same with Bournemouth. Um, they they pretty much romped um, to, to promotion. So he, he might... I think it's more the fact that it's him as a character that people don't like. I think that when you look at his managerial record in this league um, and, and yeah. how he's 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 done at this at this level, he's a fantastic appointment to try and get a um, a club that's been in the Premier League recently that has aspirations to go back up that has a talented squad of skillful players that. He's he's a great appointment as as far as I can see, and like I, said, I think it's just purely because sometimes in his interviews and sometimes he can look a little bit dour. Um, he can sort of stand there on the touchline with his arms crossed, wearing his cardigan and looking a bit grumpy. Um, great cardigan, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but ultimately he knows what he's doing, so I think that it's it's a case of giving him a chance. I think that Burnley fans will soon come around when the results start coming, which I think they inevitably will. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us, like I said, have started to come around already because of just because of the interviews. I think I said it on your show yesterday. I was underwhelmed. And then this charming Cockney man comes on and starts talking. He's been media trained since the age of 14. And all of a sudden, I'm like, this guy might know what he's on about. It's not that I'm falling for the media training at all or anything, is it? Um, but just to go back to that cardigan, it's quite interesting because he still wears the same one, you know, the one with the three stripes there. <laughs> 
Uh, and it's interesting because we found we found it on uh, Burnley Twitter, and it's something ridiculous, like seven hundred quid, more than that, I think. Yeah. Actually, I think it's like a maybe a, a, over a grand. But it was quite funny because there were some pictures. Obviously, we've just been to Cadiz, or some pictures of him getting off the plane. All the lads are there in like shorts and t-shirts, and he comes out wearing that cardigan. <laughs> yeah. For God's sake, you're not doing yourself any favors there. Man. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it, we'll get into the actual game. Then obviously, we've spoken about at length your injuries and how we expect. Luton will play a possession-based sort of like game and, and try and make it tick in the middle, uh, even without the likes of Barkley and Laconga. But it's difficult to see how Burnley will set up. But what sort of game are you predicting? Um, just going based off what you've said and looking at the two squads, like you said, you're very top-heavy. You've got some very good forwards, but maybe a little bit light at the back. I think we can capitalise on that. So I think we can score uh, maybe two or three goals. You probably think similarly yourselves that you can get at our defence. Um, because you've got some good forwards and we're a little bit unsure of who even the keeper is going to be at this stage. Like It probably will be Haladke if we don't bring somebody else in between now and then, who did well at Ipswich last season, to be fair. Uh, but we do have a few injuries at centre-back ourselves, but thankfully not our sort of like starting two centre-backs in Esteve and O'Shea. However, there are some rumours today and yesterday that O'Shea could be off, so it'll be interesting to see if that materialises before the weekend, fingers crossed it doesn't. But what sort of game you expected? I think for me... Both teams to score could be a could be a player that sort of game. Yeah, I think um, I, I originally had um, one all down in, in as my prediction. I said that I would actually take not losing against you guys. Um, yeah. I think the advantage of being at home and under the lights and the, the the natural adrenaline that comes from the football season starting again, I would like to see us sort of at least get on the score sheet and like I say, hopefully see us to a positive result, which I consider against you guys as, like I mentioned earlier on, I think that you'll go up automatically. So naturally you're one of the two best sides that I can see coming to Kenilworth Road. Um, it's whether or not we catch you cold in a, in a, in a sense or and, and getting yeah. used to playing under Parker, whether that'll be an advantage for us. But like I say, that's negated by the fact that I feel like we're, we're, a concession of goal waiting to happen, you know. So I think that you'll at least score one. Um, I think that we'll at least score one. It's whether or not um, either of us can can make that that push forward and and make take that advantage. I'd like to see Luton's attack inside be able to 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 overcome you guys and get a two one win. But the reality of it is, is that I think it could be. It's definitely going to be a, a both teams to score. It's just a case of what way will it go and. I think given our frailties at the back, um, I will take a one-all score draw all day long if I could. Yeah, it's interesting because I would take that. I would take a 1-1, but I have predicted us to win. Obviously, I predicted 3-1 yeah. Burnley on your show yesterday. I do feel a bit more reserved this morning. I don't know what it is, but it was just I was gonna say a one one yesterday on your show, and then you told me about all these injuries. I'm like, nah, we'll win. But now you've just told me about you've, you've just reminded me of how good you are going forward with the likes of Morris and people like that. And I'm thinking, oh, hold on a second, maybe I'll take a draw again. I'll stand by my three one just because I've already said it and it's it's out there in the you know YouTube sphere now, so I can't really go back on it. Um, but it's gonna be interesting. The catching as cold comment as well is interesting. I think under company, we had a slow start, and in them first ten games, we didn't really click until like the ninth or tenth game. Obviously, we lost at home. Sorry, away to Watford. In that again, apologies for swearing. We drew with yourselves. Uh, we drew at home to Stoke. I think it was. We drew away to Preston. You know, we, we had a lot of poor results in that, and I do feel like catching as cold might be something that. Um, teams can do in the earlier part of the season, which is a worry because the early part of the season is actually quite big for Burnley. We've got some very big games in there. Obviously, yourselves, Leeds away, Sunderland away and uh, Blackburn. Again, apologies for swearing for the Burnley fans at home. That one has to be a win, that one. I take three draws and a win in that Blackburn game all day long, if I'm being honest with you. Just do not lose that one. But yeah, uh, we'll pretty much end it there, mate. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, of course I have. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's been really nice meeting you, Joe, and uh, thank you for uh, for having me on and uh, letting me return the pa the favour. Like I said, the uh, the the video of us two will be out on YouTube at five o'clock today, so uh, you can you can enjoy your grumpy face on there. I didn't think you looked grumpy, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> it's just on the thumbnail. It's just on the thumbnail. I, I won't I, I won't be putting this out until probably minimum after then, maybe very very later tonight for YouTube members. And actually, I've forgotten to do something. Apologies to everybody, the YouTube members. I'm rusty. I haven't put the banner up there. I normally put this banner up halfway through the show where you can see the YouTube members at the bottom. If you if if your name isn't on there and you are a YouTube member, it's because I haven't edited the list from the end of last season yet. So it's uh, interesting. I'll get it all edited as well. But yeah, if you do want to become a member, you can. This show will be available for members only 
first for the first 24 hours so members do get benefits like early release of shows and things like that and i'm still working on a show that can be members only again for the first couple of hours hopefully there'll be an announcement on that within the next few weeks but we'll see we'll see but yeah thank you for coming on the show phil it's been a pleasure good luck for the season just after the first game of the season obviously <laughs> same as mate same as <laughs>